Mr. Speaker, I understand that when that member thinks of the prospect of a carbon tax election, he comes unglued and uh, becomes very rattled and loses control of himself, waving his hands around because he's desperate to quadruple the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre. He's desperate to push uh, a government takeover that will shut down people's private drug plans and ban them from having access to their medical plans. Common sense DP Liberals, costs are up, taxes up, crimes up, times up. This government has doubled the cost of housing, doubled the debt, forced two million people to the food bank, raised taxes, and now they want a 61 cent a litre carbon tax that will grind our economy to a halt. The good news is, in a carbon tax election, Canadians can axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Can we bring it home now? The Honourable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, maybe I can speak in a language the uh, Leader of the Opposition will understand. They're going to cut the dental. They're going to axe the pharmacare. They're going to break the health system, and they're going to destroy childcare. The difference between those slogans and the nonsense he throws around the vacuous garbage that's best left for Nabisco, not for the House of Commons, is that's the stuff he's actually going to do. And at some point, he's going to have to look in the eyes of seniors and tell them what he's going to do to dental care. He's going to have to look in the ID eyes of diabetes patients and say what he's going to do with their diabetes medication. At some time, the vitriol done and the truth comes <laughs> Colleagues, we're, we're skating pretty close to the line. I'd recommend for members to ensure that they don't do that. The Honourable, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I understand that when that member thinks of the prospect of a carbon tax election, he comes unglued and uh, becomes very rattled and loses control of himself, waving his hands around because he's desperate to quadruple the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre. He's desperate to push uh, a government takeover that will shut down people's private drug plans and ban them from having access to their medical plans. Common sense Conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime, and protect your drug plan. How's, how about that? The, hon the Honourable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, this is the guy who said dental care doesn't exist. This is the guy that said providers won't sign up. Well, I got news for you. 750,000 people across this country got care. I also got news for you, Mr. Speaker. And that is more than 80% of providers have signed up. We're getting it done. So he can fear monger. He can scare people. But we're going to get it done on pharma as well. We're going to make sure that diabetes patients get their medication. We're going to make sure that women get their contraceptive because that's what freedom looks like. A woman who has choice over her own body. I'd like to remind all ministers, all members, uh, that answers should be directed, questions should be asked and answers should be directed through the chair. And I'm going to again ask members to make sure we don't skate too close to the line. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. What his plan does is quadruple the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre and imposes a single payer that bans women from using their existing private plans to get contraceptives or any other form of medication. That's what a single payer means. And that is not what freedom looks like, uh, Mr. Speaker. But what, what he actually wants to do is quadruple the carbon tax, which will grind our economy to a halt. It will be a nuclear winter for our economy. Why don't we allow Canadians to vote in a carbon tax election to decide if they're ready to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime?
quarter. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll tell you what freedom doesn't look like, and it doesn't look like Conservative members of Parliament Which taking all expenses, paid trips to Florida to talk about how. <laughs> The Honourable Member uh, from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, Rita Lakes, I would appreciate if he would, when he has his turn, and I know that he'll have his turn to ask questions, uh, would refrain from speaking out of turn. The Honourable uh, Leader of the Government in the House of Commons from the top, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll tell you what freedom doesn't look like, and it's Conservative members of Parliament taking all expensive paid trips to talk at anti-abortion conferences and to push forward an anti-abortion vision of Canada. That's Mr. Right. Speaker, when he talks about women's rights, he neglects to share his hidden agenda that would take away their reproductive rights. Mr. Speaker, when he talks about freedom, he only talks about half of the story. Mr. Speaker, today what we are doing is demonstrating that this House does not have confidence in the leader of the Conservative Party. Liberals are too weak to stand up to Doug Ford, so some patients are leaving surgeries with thousands of dollars of bills. The Liberals are too weak to stand up to Daniel Smith, and so people in our province are forced to pay to see a doctor. See, that's what Conservatives do. They cut and gut health care so their big business buddies can use that to make, rip off Canadians even more. Why is the Liberal government letting Conservatives privatize our health care system? The Honourable Minister of Health. Well, Mr. Speaker, if you're going to be talking about being too weak, two days after the NDP leader got a letter from the leader of the Conservative opposition saying to back out of standing up for pharmacare and standing up for improvements in the health care system, he ran away. And if he ran away from that, how is he going to stand up for Canadians, is what I would ask, Mr. Speaker. And I would say that we had a chance. We were working well together. We got things done on dental. 750,000 people, over 80% of providers. We were working well together on pharmacare. If he has ideas, he knows we were all ears. But he's all about politics, Mr. Speaker. He's all about trying to divide rather than working together. Colleagues. Lena have the Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Conservative Premiers privatize our health care system and have done nothing about it. Health. I get frustrated because there is an existential crisis facing our health system and it is represented in the person of the Conservative leader whose cuts and approach to health care, to destroy pharmacare, to attack dental care, to undermine the deals that we've signed with provinces and territories, greatly menace this thing that we treasure, public health. And the investments that we made, they must continue. The progress we made must continue. That's why I urge parliamentarians to stand up against what the Conservatives would do to this health system and work collaboratively to make sure that we get the care that every Canadian Here's deserves. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. After nine years of this Liberal NDP government, we know that they are just not worth the cost, and the evidence is everywhere you look. In Ontario, for the first time ever, over a million people visited a food bank in just one year. That's thanks to the radical Liberal NDP carbon tax. Ontario families say they just can't keep up with the mountain of debt and the taxes that this Prime Minister has poured all over them. So why won't this government call a carbon tax election and let Canadians decide? Yeah. 
The Honourable Minister of the Environment and for Climate Change. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I would like to read an extract from a report that came out today from the Insurance Bureau of Canada, and I quote, Summer of 2024 ranks as the most destructive season in Canadian history for insured losses due to severe weather. In only two months, July and August, this summer eclipsed the worst year on record and has pushed 2024 year-to-day tally over $7.7 billion in severe natural catastrophes, Mr. Speaker. What's the answer from the Leader of the Opposition? Let the planet burn. We won't take this on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. And all the member from uh, uh, St. Albert, uh, Edmonton, St. Albert, would uh, like to uh, pose this question, but I'll ask him to wait his turn before taking the floor. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I thought the carbon tax was supposed to fix all that. They won't call a carbon tax election because they know exactly what Canadians will say. 2023 was the eighth consecutive year that food bank usage rose. By some great coincidence, it was also the eighth consecutive year of this Liberal government. So how many more people need to visit or need to be forced to a food bank before the Environment Minister admits that taxes are up, that costs are up, that crime is up, and that his time is up. The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. The, the reality, Mr. Speaker, is that the Conservative Party and its leader are not there to protect Canadians. They're there to protect the interest of their friends, like oil executives who attended a special event for the leader of the opposition. I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, that oil executives don't come to my fundraiser. I can guarantee you that. But th what they want to do is take away, in, the, in, in his writing, Carlton, 58,000 people are receiving the Canada carbon rebate. In Thornhill, 60, more than 60,000 people are receiving more money than what they pay in carbon pricing. We're helping with affordability, Mr. Speaker, and we're helping to fight climate change. The Honourable Member from Foothills. For nine years, the NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and yes, time is up. According to the Liberal NDP's government's own statistics, the number of Canadians suffering with food insecurity is up 111 per cent. That is a quarter of Canadians who don't know where their next meal is coming from. But there is a solution. Axe the carbon tax and give Canadians the relief they need. They know that 70 per cent of Canadians want to axe the tax. Will they listen to Canadians tomorrow and call a carbon tax election? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It would be great in this House if the official opposition actually worked with facts. The vast majority of Canadians get more money back. We have a climate plan that is actually working, fighting the existential threat of climate change, but it is also creating economic opportunity and prosperity for the future. We have seen over 100 clean growth projects, $60 billion of investment. It's the $12 billion now invested in Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. It's the Janssen potash mine. It's the Soyona lithium plant in Quebec. It is a plan that is working. They have no plan for the future on the environment and no plan on the economy. The Honourable Member from Foothills. Here is what their plan is doing. The Liberal NDP carbon tax is driving up costs on farmers, on truckers, on food manufacturers and prices at the grocery store and Canadians can't afford to put food on the table. According to Food Banks Alberta, use is up 73% and 40% of those are children. Meanwhile, the Liberal NDP government say, hey, Canadians have never had it so good. Well, food banks are struggling just to meet demand. If the Liberal NDP government thinks that their carbon tax is so great, will they call a carbon tax election tomorrow and let Canadians decide? Yeah. After nine years of NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime's up, and time's up. Last night, the Prime Minister appeared on The Late Show to pathetically explain why he keeps backing down to American presidents on softwood lumber. He called his failure on softwood lumber a small issue. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of forestry workers have lost their jobs. It's an insult to them. After nine years of repeatedly backing down to each and every president on softwood lumber, how can Canadians believe they'll ever get a deal to lift these punishing tariffs? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, 
Our government has stood up to Trump, and our government has stood up to Putin. Meanwhile, when Putin told the Conservatives to vote against the free trade deal with Ukraine, they said, okay, fine. And when Trump threatened Canada with 232 tariffs against steel and aluminum, we stood up to the U.S. You know what the Conservatives said? They said that was dumb, and they told us to back down. We did not, we will never back down to bullies. We will always stand up for community. The Honourable Member from dufferin Caledon. It's pathetic, pathetic. That from the government that allowed detonators, Canadian detonators, to end up in Russian landmines that blew up Ukrainian troops. They're a disgrace. They They've backed down to Trump on softwood. They backed down from Obama on softwood. They backed down to Biden on softwood. And after nine years of complete and total failure, tens of thousands of foreign workers have lost their jobs. She didn't even address it. And her prime minister insulted them by saying it's a small issue. We know this arrogant prime minister won't apologize to the forestry workers, so will they let him judge him in a carbon tax election? Once again, members, I invite them to be very uh, prudent and judicious in their choice of words. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, when our country faced an existential economic challenge, the threat that our free trade agreement with the United States would be torn up, our government stood up to the U.S. And the Conservatives ran scared. They told us to back down. When the U.S. imposed illegal 232 tariffs on our steel and aluminum, we stood up for Canadians. We imposed countervailing tariffs. The Conservatives told us to back down. Canadians remember that. We will never back down. We stand up for... The Honourable Member from Prince Albert. When it comes to defending jobs, we would never tell anybody to back down. Only this Prime Minister does that. After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up. Their time is up. Last night, the Prime Minister told Stephen Colbert that his failure to negotiate a deal on softwood lumber and fisheries was a small issue. Unbelievable. Seriously, there's been over $9 billion that Canadian companies have paid to the U.S. in tariffs. There's 800,000 direct and indirect jobs on the line. The forestry sector is in a crisis. Yet this Prime Minister has backed down time and time again to three different presidents. Why does this Prime Minister show much disdain to Canadian the Honourable, the Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, there's only one party in this House that shows disdain to Canadian workers, and it's the Conservative That's Party right. of Canada. Time and time again, when our country has had to negotiate trade deals, this government has stood for Canadians. We renegotiated NAFTA. We stood up against the U.S. and the U.S. steel and aluminum tariffs, and we will continue to stand up for Canadian workers in all sectors, in including the forestry sector. But, Mr. Speaker, what is up is time for them to stop playing political games and to get down to the serious business of governing this country. That's what Canadians expect. It's time for them to grow up. Yeah. Very good. 